The, the fisheries out here are truly special and it doesn't seem like there, it seems like there is a lot of fishermen, but it doesn't seem like there's a lot of crappie fishermen out here. But Maine has a crazy amount of crappies, a crazy amount of big crappies, and no one that is really around here targets them. No one has really respects what they have. It's honestly pretty unfortunate because like in Minnesota, we really cherish the fish. We try to take care of crappies, bluegill, perch, you know, we manage for pike, we, whatever. But out here, they don't. Like they, if it's not a salmon, a trout, they could care less about it. It's sad to say, but we see a lot of them laying dead on the ice out here because people suggest that you should just let them lay on top of the ice because they haven't been here for so long. But we literally, I mean, if you come from the Midwest, the crappie is a staple fish in most fisheries that are highly sought after. I don't think what anyone in this state or region understands is you have probably the number one world-class crappie fishery right here, right now. What I think people should do is really look at what you got here um, because this is amazing fishery. I mean, I scouted a few lakes and I was just amazed that like, I mean, I drilled one hole on each one and I was like, oh, there's fish everywhere. Like, you don't do that on many lakes, especially in Minnesota. I think because it isn't a native species, people kind of, you know, knock it and they, or they don't feel that it's, it's something that they should be managing because it, it wasn't something that should have been there in the first place. Now, invasive species are kind of a big topic in, in a lot of lakes and, and stuff in fresh water. And, you know, this is a native species to North America that has now you know, gotten into main waters and it's thriving. It's crazy to see, you know, massive schools of fish that are super aggressive and fun to catch. This is equivalent to, and maybe even better than the red lake crappie boom. And we saw what happened there. People went up there, they kept all of them and it ain't the same. It's kind of coming back, but it ain't never going to be the same. And what's going to happen here is they're all going to get left on the ice or killed. I mean, I've seen so many people just throw crappies on the ice, throw perch on the ice, throw bluegills, just pike. I mean, just because that's what they do with them out here. Like, I had a guy come up to me and literally say, you'll know if I caught something because it'll be on the ice flopping. And I'm like. Pan fishing in Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, you know, the whole Midwest, it's crazy to think about how heavily, you know, regulated they are and, and what steps we take to try to protect those fisheries, to try to build, you know, the best year class as possible to keep size structures where they are. And here, completely unmanaged resource, uh, you know, there's no limits on the fish here. You can, you can keep as many as you want. You come out here and catch 500 crappies and take every single one of them home. Like, why not just embrace these fish, take them in, eat them, try them out. You don't know what they, you know, I haven't had a person say I've ate a crappie since I've been here. It's try them, they're awesome. And you know, other panfish species too, like perch, no limits on these things. And and people aren't even aware, you know, that this is a great uh, food fish, that they're fun to catch, that there's people in other parts of the country that would love to travel here to experience the bites that exist. Well, we have a chance here where if something actually does change and they do start protecting those fish, these could be fish that people catch from generations to generations, especially if they, you know, practice selective harvest, releasing those 12 and a half, 12 inch fish and up, and, you know, keeping a few eaters so that the population doesn't get overpopulated and stunted out. I'm telling you right now, this has been some of the craziest fast action I've ever seen, and if I think steps aren't taken to kind of protect that, it could be a huge opportunity that's being lost, not only from a fishery standpoint, but just a recreational standpoint, you know? Um, I know a ton of people that would love to come out here and experience this. So it's, it's really important that we can take advantage of, you know, these fisheries and show that they have these fish to offer and they really need to be protected because this is something special out here. We as a fishing community could grow something incredibly special and it could be the number one destination trip for a lot of people to come see 
the coolest part of the country I've ever been to and just have endless amounts of fishing opportunities. So I think it's on all of us to make a little bit of a change and just draw eyes over to this area of the country and realize, you know, we can do better as a fishing community. We don't need to leave fish laying on the ice for the eagles to peck at. Um, just kind of embrace it. Like I said, I don't, I don't think anybody in this community really understands this is a world-class fishery and you could totally just throw it down the drain or you could embrace it and I think we should embrace it. For our third trip of the season, a momentous one, we travel across the country to another North Star State, settled in the far north reaches of the Appalachian Mountains in a land of rushing rivers and heavy snowfall, you find a haze of the salt water that crashes its rocky coast. This is, quite possibly, the most beautiful and expansive playground any ice fisherman could dream of. A place commonly forgotten across the ice belt and known as the Pine Tree State. These hills and valleys play host to a population of crappies few have ventured to chase. Welcome to Maine. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh my god! Look at this thing! God! Please! <laughs> just the head rolling off and just like oh, 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 oh you almost got it <laughs> that was come on okay so we're we're out on the lake <laughs> we're out on the lake and we're having fun we're gonna go try to chase some of these fish down we got to get some fish registered for the fish donkey derby so name of the game is we notice these fish really like to push bait up to the edge of these basins they like chasing the alawives, the little perch, whatever they're eating, right up to the steep breaks. So basically we're just going to start drilling holes around the whole lake and see where they're pushing bait up to. Here we go. Definitely going to. Got a jamba. There was a bunch of them down there too. Like I started jigging and like four or five of them came in. Well, that was fun. Not expecting that. I thought it was crappy. Those perch bite so hard out here. Yeah, I mean, that thing was like, it kind of felt like a crappy and cross between a perch and a crappie, you know? So I got that perch 13 and a quarter incher. Um, we're out here looking for crappies, but we'll take it. I mean, why not? You got different categories for a reason, so. But we're gonna get on it and keep trying to find these crappies because uh, the guys over here just caught one, and so we know they're around. Now we just gotta get after, find the actual school because we're just finding onesie twosies right now, so let's do it. Got him. There's a nice song. Oh. <laughs> Sweet. That thing is a pretty one. Look how thick that thing is. That thing is absolutely gorgeous. Give me a bum bird. I don't think this one's that old. I mean, I don't know. He might be super. Look at that purple. Mm. That is sick. There's an absolute beauty. That one's really cool. It's got some like iridescent purple in its tail. And just a super black back to him. Well, let's see here. What does he end up going? Oh, he did not want to be measured. That one's only 12 and a half. 
let's uh we're doing a fish donkey trap attack tournament right now so i'm gonna enter the first fish of the day let's release this beauty this guy is just being all sorts of problems very nice that was a gorgeous one had to break out the schoolie reel for that guy and let's see here that one came on a Jamie XL with a five millimeter drop and I had to work them pretty dang good. So he puked up a bunch of bugs. So I think I'm going to switch up my jig and plastic combo and see if I can get something that'll fire them up a little bit quicker, but we're going to get back after it. Okay. I got him. He's big. Oh my God, he's, he's coming up to eat. Yeah, he feels big. Oh wow, that would be why. What is he doing suspended so far off the bottom? <laughs> Dude. Like 10 feet off the bottom. Yeah, and he raced up like 15 feet to eat it. Yeah. It's a nice perch. Gosh, they have they're they are like perfect fire tiger out here. It's crazy. They're red, red fins and how dark they are. They're awesome. Let's get this guy back. That thing raced up like a bottle rocket just do No. <clears throat> Not great. <laughs> and oh, it is. It is a little. Dinkosaurus Rex. Okay, first one of the day. Thick fish. I'd love to see a big one out of here, but I don't have the bump board, so I'm not even going to register this one. Plus, it's only like eight inches. <laughs> He's a little more skeptical this time. Got him. Nice. It doesn't feel crazy big though. He honestly feels kind of perchy. Ooh, big crappie. Nice. There we go. First one day. Wow, look how gold these things are. Holy smokes. These are the prettiest fish we have. No kidding. Wow! Look at those colors! We've got a lot of gold fish this year, but these are like... Look at the purple on the tail bar. Yeah, these are like you drew them. Look at how cool that thing is. Waldo lined me up there. CJ drilled me a hole and... Yeah, I, I honestly missed him the first time. He totally caught me off guard, but... Fooled him. Got him on a schoolie, which is... Uh, it, it was weird. We caught them all on pinheads and tikas yesterday. We've been dropping on a few fish today, and they're very not liking it. So, went more finesse, and that was fun. Cool fish. I need to get it submitted to Fish Donkey now, and the bump board is right there. So, we got to go get that. All right. Get her back. Ended up actually going 13 and a half, which I was not expecting. I thought it was like a 12 and three quarter. So, nice fish. We're going to get it back. See you, buddy. That was fun. We're pulling the plug. We're working really hard to not catch anything. <laughs> got one, got a couple nice ones, but uh, yeah, we just need to go somewhere else. There's but, a lot of options around. There's way too many lakes to kind of get hung up. We want to just keep exploring. And honestly, um, we need to catch quite a few fish today because we want to win this tournament. And uh, also, we need dinner. We're trying to eat. <laughs> We're trying to eat because Pink's trying to cook a main special tonight. So we're making a business decision and we're gonna go try to catch a lot more because we're not right now. Okay, bye. He's been typing for a long time. <laughs> the dots have been going for like five minutes. Oh boy. What the hell? 
How can you have a word that has 20 letters in it? Come on! <laughs> there's, there's a space. Quackogomic. Lake. Quackogomic? Gambit. Gambit. I'm just getting warmed up for this one. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, what the heck? Kem Kemquasa Bam Tikuk. Kem's Kemqua Wow. Kem oh. You try to go and it just doesn't. Kem <laughs> just <laughs> Quanta Bakuk. Like Quanta Bakuk. Kemqua sub bam tick hook. Kem yeah, that has to, I mean Kemqua sub bam tick hook like. Niso when din no. Niso when ni hunk like. Kaboom quiz. Kaboom quiz. Num who. Oh boy. Kaboom quiz. <laughs> Ooh. Num chugging ways. <laughs> Moose look McGuntick cups. Hmm. Kaboom Tris. Oh. <laughs> Moose look McGuntick cups sup tick lake. Moose. Moose look McGuntick cups sup tick lake. <laughs> Kaboom quiz num chugging ways pond. Oh, big black brook lake. That was easy. <laughs> Gives me the easiest one. Here you go. Well, we bounced. We are on a new lake now, uh, looking for eaters. Pink's got to make some uh, some grub tonight for us, and we need some fish. So, right now we're just looking for. Pretty much a harvest mission. If we get a big one, that'd be, I mean, that's awesome. But uh, goal today is just pretty much fill up a bucket of fish so we can go back home and Pink can make some great, great food. This is an absolute perfect snowball. The snow is really just absolutely just beautiful right here. Um, not fun to tow through though, but we're going to keep bouncing around. This is just, it's a tiny little lake. It's actually just a shallow basin. So we're going to keep, uh, we're just gonna keep moving around this edge right here just to see if we can find uh, find some eaters. We're just looking for a school that we can quickly just pinwheel. And uh, yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now. So we're gonna start moving over this way. Overshot him just a little bit. That's why I played hockey. Um, let's keep moving around though, grab the live. Meet up with Bart, he's got the auger and the vex and we're gonna keep bouncing around. Oh, yeah. oh, I was marking. Oh, there's another one. This actually feels like a pretty good fish, I'm not gonna lie. Well, because it is. <laughs> nice eater. <laughs> okay, there's another one down there. I need to get back down. That was on just drop kick. I had this tied on from the other lake because they did not like the pinhead there for some reason. And uh, it's really fun catching them on a schoolie. So I'm gonna do that. I really hope his friend's still there. Literally, literally I dropped down. He, he came in, I set the hook, and literally at the exact same spot, there was a mark on the vex, there was still a brick there. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, there was two. Whoops. <laughs> you son of a You literally hit my line. I know. Good at 20 feet, terrible at 50. Uh, 10 foot right there. 
I haven't seen anything yet. Whew, I'm gonna catch this one. <laughs> Just freight trained it. <laughs> it is tiny. Ooh, he got spunky. He's small. But there's a bunch down there. Yeah. Nah. No, pink will kill me. Not quite what we're looking for. Little guy. What do you got going on here? Going to a new lake. We got one eater, but we need some bigger and we also need some eaters. So we're just going to keep moving. Great thing about Maine, there's lakes everywhere. So we're just going to puddle, puddle hop. Puddle hop. And it got hot. The sun's out. They showed up. Wow. This thing's actually got some meat on it. Coming up right now. Oh, it is a perch. Ah! It's not a perch. Well, we found perch. Should be the Perch Chronicles. <laughs> This is what we did. Finally. Dink. Alright. We just got on school down there. Let's see if we can sort through, find a couple couple eaters. Come back. Let's get another one here. There go. Seems like another little one, but at least they're crappies. Perch. One crappie, one perch. I don't know. It's growing. The heck is an eater! We got an eater, finally. <laughs> Is there more down there? Yeah, they're there. Finally. A nice 10, 10 and a half inch right there. Nice the meaty one though. Yes. That's exactly one. what we need. I don't know. I don't know where I am. Vapor chub the pinhead though. Okay. That one's better. Is it actually? Yeah. It's not. <laughs> Dang it. However, there's still However, there is more there. I'll just deal that pinhead. Little right. guy. Pink and I were just roaming around the edge of this base and uh, the other boys are over with CJ. And uh, we just ran into a little pack of them. Mm -hmm. Got him. Man, be right, be right. It's okay. A little bit small. That one's not bad though. That top one easier. Get him. Yep. 
That's a good one. I hate to break it to you. I don't think he is. It's gonna get angry. They do get angry like here that other one when they get to the, got hole. to the hole. Plus, you're not picking up a lot of lines. It's an eater. Oh yeah, solid one. Ah, that's what we want. There we go. There we go. Another eater. Look how gold they are. Yeah, these are sweet fish. Very pretty. Can you tilt that down a little bit, man? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Sweet. That's solid. That's good. That's a very nice fish. If this isn't a bass, it's a donk. That I saw that one. That one looks really good. Come on. Short runs though. Head shaking. Oh. Yeah, foul hooked a perch. Oh. <laughs> it's a giant perch, but he foul hooked it. God. <laughs> Been stuck. God, that felt so good. Oh, boy. And it's pissed. Outstanding. Break it off? Yeah. But I think I'm pretty close to him. You got him. <laughs> That don't, that don't even look bad, dude. Those low ones look solid. Yeah. Yeah. Crap, dog. <laughs> I slammed my line off while I was spooling it down there, and I just hand lined down, but fish still came up and bit, so. That was sick. <laughs> Do it again. Deal him again on the hand line? You're hand lining? Yes. Yeah, I was spooling my jig down there and it's the line snapped. But I already had the jig down there, so I just... And then I caught one. <laughs> what are the specs on your finger? Medium heavy. <laughs> Fast action. Dude, I felt that bite. Hella sensitive. Just dunk. <laughs> That's it. Medium heavy. Fast. Dude, you saw that. That was yeah. sick as hell. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> snap. And I was like, damn it. Do, do, do. Wow. <laughs> that would have been sick if it would have been like a 12, though. Oh yeah. Beautiful eater crappie right there. That one came on a drop XL. Oh, jeez. That's a good one right there. That is a real good one. Yeah, drill a couple holes. Nice one on the uh, drop kick, Motorola plastic. Yeah, so a little update. We uh, we were on another lake. We're trying to get some eaters, and uh, 
these lakes out here are all connected and we went over there and really there wasn't anything so we kind of think that a lot of them either food wise or whatever left that one and they came we're only across the street from that lake well now we come over here and the thing we're actually finding a lot more life a lot more really nice crappies i mean we're getting some really solid eaters you know it's probably a good 11 and a half 12 inch crappie um but yeah, we're just bouncing around. We started out in the basin, and what we found here in Maine is that these fish really don't sit in the middle of the basin. They want to be on the edge. And uh, we came over here, and as soon as we went up on the break and got on the flat part, they were all over in here. So now we're just kind of picking it apart, um, bouncing around with live, and then going and um, catching them with the Vexlar. I don't, this is the biggest fish I've hooked here. That's good. Nice crappie. It's not that big, but holy spunky. He was a fighty one. He was, very spunky. Just came in and crushed it. Look at how pretty these things are. They're so spacked. They're beautiful, man. Just like how dark they are, too. Like, They're like, is it just my lenses on my relevance, no. or are they very green? They're very green. Huh, that's super sick. He's got one eye. I look funny. Oh, no. It's just no, way, he's got it. Oh, good eating. eater. We'll keep <laughs> him. still got it. <laughs> nice. They come in mad, don't they? Uh, yeah. No, he crushed it. Yeah, like, That's why I was like, what the? I was like, what the hell? Luke, would you grab that drone before it what the f just happened? That's what I thought happened. There's a brick. Look at that. Mean. Um, I was really confused there because I was dropping my jig down and I was asking Luke about the drone and um, he ate it on the fall. <laughs> Literally ate it on the fall and uh, I <laughs> plucked it out of his mouth because I brought it back up. And then, uh, yeah, I was super confused there. I couldn't figure out where my jig was, plucked it out of his mouth and he ate it again. And I got like four more of them down there. Oh my God. Oh, oh it's a perch. We don't want these, but they're mixed in. This place is getting charged up right now with the sunset coming. Starting to go, go a little bonkers here. Holy shit, I'm marking fish. Oh, that's why. Bubba Louie! What? Little large mouth. What? Oh, he likes that. Pinner minner. It's in there. Yeah. Oh, nice. It's dead. That's 14, 15. No. Hey, bring the board. 13, maybe. It's just they're so big. Yeah. Big 
Come on. You get him? Yeah. Now we're talking. Boom. Another stud right there. 12 inch. Sure, do that one. Talk about this later. guy. Yeah. Here, you want to drop down this hole then? Because they're still right oh, there. Yeah. All right, just moved over here, caught this awesome 13 and a half, just skyscraper brick. Look at how thick that thing is. I'm entering it for our tournament right now. I just got to get the release video. And recording right now, let this big girl go. See ya. Sick. Do you, you probably need my keys. Oh, you're going to get that. Okay, I was going to say you're going to need my keys. This one's a crappie. Oh no, he's a crappie. Look at that. Boom, another nice eater. We're gonna be eating good tonight. I think Pink is cooking another New England special tonight, and it's not the lobster I thought it was earlier, so that'll be a different night. Sorry to spoil you. Um, but it'll be good, and might even get to bring some fish home. But what is important to note too is Maine doesn't have limits, and we've kind of talked about this. We would like to help them uh, get limits and kind of take care of their fisheries. So we're going to take like our fair share, so probably 20, 25, what we would do in Minnesota on any fishery, and uh, then leave it and just keep just keep the 10 to 12s. That's all we're keeping. We're putting those bigger 13s back. And hopefully we get an even bigger one. CJ said he's heard of some 16s out here, so I feel like we're in the right place for that to happen. You got another one? Looks big. I just had it up in the hole and it looked big. Nice. Yeah. That's a big one. Yeah, that's another stud, dude. Catch. That's a big one. All right. One. Trying to register this one for the fish donkey. 14 and a half inch right there. Just went back to back with that 13 and three quarter I just got. 14 and a half. So I'm going in to enter this thing. Get that selfie going. That video, 14 and a half going back. Face. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Just another eater. Dude, look at the colors on this one. Look at this thing. I know. That thing's like cheated out. That's so cool. Isn't it incredible? I've never seen crappies with like, I'll get it in the sun so you guys can see yeah, it. I'm hooked up now too. Well, all those hooked up too. But like, we'll show you once he catches his. Hopefully it's a crappie, not a perch. It's a crappie. Crappie. But like, look at how different, every one of them's different. Look at how different their pigmentations are. It's nuts. They're just insane. Just so cool. They're gorgeous fish. They're gorgeous. We're gonna enjoy this sunset bite and hopefully we can run into what? Like a 16 Waldo? Maybe a 17, maybe Let's an 18? So. I mean, we're in the right area. Be very nice. Look at how beautiful these things are. Boop. Wow. Okay. Nope. And then it's like, boom. Yep. Got him. Could not be more in the deucer. <laughs> Get that cord out of there. It's fighting like a huge perch. Who is the way off bottom? Okay. Well, it could be. I should fighting like those other ones. That's Ooh, it's a big crappie. He's upside down. Ooh. Gotta let him go out of the hole. Yep, 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 yep. No, it's a crappie. Yep. Solid. Nothing crazy. Yeesh. Another 12. That was perfect, dude. So far, the sunset bite has been wicked. We kind of were bouncing around all day. Totally different weather today. We had some high sun and I think a little bit higher pressure today, but it was tough. Now that the sun's setting, a little bit lower light conditions, the fish are just firing up. They're coming up off the bottom. They're getting real aggressive. They're eating stuff like a pinhead. We haven't had that action all day just about. 
and uh, we're bouncing around and it seems like you can't do anything wrong. The schools are huge, they're raising up. You point the live around and it is just a carpet of freaking fish. We're going around with the vexes, you plug it down there and it's just Christmas tree, Christmas tree, Christmas tree. You can't do anything wrong right now, it's freaking sick. Let's get... Oh no, I got it. The one? Oh, I got one. <laughs> this is crappy. Oof, Doc. Look how tall that thing is, though. God, they're pretty. I'm not even going to register it. I want to win. I don't want to get second, so I'm not registering this little 13-incher. We'll let her go, though. She's just a beauty fish. But look at the colors on these things. Like, I mean, they got just different pattern than our Minnesota ones. We don't get them with these crazy lines across them like that, and then these checker like that. And then they're super dark green on their back. Gold on the bottom. Green on the back, super cool fish. Let's get her back. Thank you. Nice. Sure. This is fun. Came here to get eaters and we got those and now we're catching some pretty good sized ones. I mean, biggest one we got was what, 14 and a half, 14 and three quarter. All right, so that sunset bite got really hectic and uh, it definitely went down. That's kind of the thing with crappie fishing. We've showed you that over the years that you can grind all day and then just run into them for an hour at sunset and just kind of goes ballistic. And that's what happened to us today. Got a lot of really quality fish, a few big ones to register for the tournament and overall good day in Maine. But we need to buckle it up. There's like crazy fog rolling into here. It's actually really cool and the lens is fogging up. So we're going to pick up our fish, get back to the Airbnb and Pink's going to take over in the kitchen. I think he's got a New England special for all of you and uh, I'm very excited to eat it. So. Yeah, Waldo's going to try to stay awake tonight, but that won't happen. So, <clears throat> yeah, let's get back to the house, eat some food, and then the rest of this trip, we're basically dedicating to probably one fish. So, that'll be fun. All right, another great day on the water here in Maine, and today was total eater mission. We went out, it went from eater mission to actually catching a lot of big ones, so that was super cool, but we did keep a ton, which I'm super psyched about. And what we're doing tonight is making a crappie chowder. So I'm really excited about this one. It's a total Maine slash New England staple. Um, I'm going to do my own stock right now. So what I'm going to put together is a little bit of crappie and lobster. So what I have is some literal crappie bodies. So we knocked the sides off some fish, took the gills and guts out of them. And I'm going to use those and some of the lobster shells from the lobster that I cooked the other day and get that simmering down in a pot with some fresh vegetables here. We're gonna strain that, make really nice stock, and then get this chowder put together. So I'm just gonna cut up some onions. I got some fresh parsley here. I got five cloves of garlic and some celery and just chunk everything up big. I don't have to mince this up or anything. Just nice big sections. All this is just gonna simmer down in this pot behind me. Lots of good flavor going into this. A lot of this is leftover stuff from some of the other recipes that we've done this week. So it'll pretty much be like one whole red onion. I had a half one there, so I'll add this one in. Just big chunks. All this is gonna do is steep all the flavor out of everything we got going. So I'm gonna drop all this in there. I'll crush these garlic cloves. I don't need to mince them up at all. I just need to break them. And these things will just give up all their flavor in the pot. So I got the water behind me heating up. Everything's gonna slide in there. And we'll just let it simmer for a while till it smells delicious. It's gonna create some serious scum on the top after it gets up to a boil. We're gonna turn it down after that and then just skim it off and we'll have a nice clean stock that we can strain out. Okay, so I got all of my stuff put in this pot right now. The only other thing I'm gonna add to this stock is I have some seasoning. So I have some black pepper, some crushed red pepper, and kosher salt. That's what I'm gonna add into this. So uh, I'm gonna go pretty heavy on the salt, and then you can kind of adjust the, the pepper and, and red pepper flakes, determining like kind of how, what kind of flavors you like. So, but get this thing nice and salty. It's gonna start simmering down, pulling a lot of flavors out. So 
we're gonna let that go for i mean you can go as long as you want but we're probably gonna not cook it for more than about half an hour and just let that stuff really steep down um, and as soon as it's done i'm just gonna strain it all out but i'm gonna get it seasoned up and get it simmering right now Okay, now that we got the stock all put together, it's tasting really, really delicious. The next step is to just start building our chowder. Every part of this, we wanna be building flavor no matter what we're putting in there. So first I'm gonna start, I got some bacon right here. I'll probably do about half a pound of this. What I'm gonna do is just chunk it up into small pieces, get it into my pot and just start browning that in there. As soon as it's brown, I'm gonna peel it out and uh, leave all that fat sitting in the pot. And then I'm gonna mince up some garlic, celery, and like three or four cloves of garlic here, just crush that, mince it up fine. All that's gonna go into my pot, and as soon as that gets a little bit fragrant and translucent, I'm gonna sprinkle some flour on top, mix that in, and then we're gonna start building it with the stock, heavy cream, and potatoes. And at that point, we're pretty much all done. Last step is to put the fish in there, so that'll be the last thing we cut up. We got the fish just chilling out. Got some beautiful crappie fillets from today. So, start cutting, get things in the pot. We're almost home. All right, so the stock's all done. What I'm gonna do is strain it now. I just gotta put a colander over this. This one's got decently small holes in it, but most of the things in that pot are pretty big. So I'm not too worried about straining it because I'm gonna ladle it out of there anyway. So I'm gonna grab that pot, get it strained through this, and then we'll have a nice stock to use for building our chowder. All right, so I got everything cut up here. Little bacon, all of the stuff here. I got celery, red onion, garlic, potatoes. I'm gonna bring this over to the pot now. I'm using the same pot that I made the stock in. I just rinsed it out. Got it really ripping hot here. So I'm gonna drop all this bacon in there and get this frying up when it's golden brown. Take it out. Cook everything else down on that delicious fat. It's gonna be awesome. Okay, so I got all the bits of bacon all browned up in this pot right here. So what I'm gonna do now is remove all of the bacon chunks and just set them in this bowl for now. Set it aside. And then on this plate behind me, I've got all the vegetables I cut up. And I'm going to start cooking those down in this bacon fat. It should only take maybe a minute or two to start getting that stuff translucent. And then we're going to start building our chowder here. So like I said, we want to build it from the bottom up. This bacon fat and all the little brown bits are going to be our base. And then we're going to go vegetables, stock, potatoes, cream, fish. This is looking real good. I mean, bacon always looks good, Pink. Yeah, I think uh, we could just end it here and probably be totally fine. <laughs> okay, vegetables are in there. They've been cooking down for about a minute. Smelling really good. Onions and garlic are getting really soft and translucent in there. And what I'm gonna do now is I got some just regular flour here. I'm gonna do a couple heaping tablespoons of that in there and then just mix it in. And this is really gonna thicken up our chowder quite a bit. So it's basically like making a very light roux in there and just get that mixed in. Should just start to brown lightly and then we're gonna start adding our liquid. Okay, I got the flour incorporated in there starting to get a little bit brown. So I got this big bowl of stock right here and I'm just gonna start ladling it in. I'm gonna start off with a little bit just to kind of deglaze the pan at the bottom. So all those bits from the bacon cooking in there, all that brown stuff's gonna start coming up. There's tons of flavor in that. Once I get, you know, probably four or five cups in here, then I can just dump it. But you can make as much of this chowder as you want based on how much people you're trying to feed. So we got five guys, so I'm gonna make a pretty stout pot of this. So I'll probably fill this most of the way up. And that flour really helps thicken that up. So what I'm gonna do now is once I get the amount of liquid in here I'm looking for, I got some heavy cream that I'll mix in there. And that's really gonna give it that creaminess that chowder really is known for. And I'll just simmer it down a little bit. That'll start to thicken it and add my potatoes 
And right at the end, the last probably five minutes that it's simmering, five to six minutes, I'm gonna add all my chunks of fish and just let that simmer. It'll slowly cook that fish through and we're ready to eat. So I'm gonna get the pot full up here, add my cream and potatoes, and I'll check in with you right as we're adding the fish into this thing. Okay, so I just brought the uh, chowder up to just a light boil there. It's gonna start thickening up. And what I got is all this chunked up fish here. So I'm just gonna slide all this fish in. And that's just gonna cook for a few minutes and the fish will all be done. I'm gonna throw some bacon in there. I'm reserving some to put on top of it at the end, but I do want some in there as well. Okay. One last mix, and that's just gonna simmer for about five, six minutes. We're ready to go. All right, so the chowder is just thickening up right now. It's looking super good. I tasted it, and it's freaking delicious. So I got a bread bowl here. I just took this loaf, cut the top off, basically gutted it out, and this is what I'm gonna serve it in. So I'm gonna bring that pot over here. I'm gonna ladle it all in here. I got that bacon that we browned up just to sprinkle it on top. And I'm looking forward to crushing this, and I know Bart is too. So I'm gonna bring the pot over here, get this thing loaded, and then we're gonna taste it. It's gonna be awesome. Okay, this is looking absolutely insane. <laughs> I love bread bowls, so I love just tearing the top off one of these and dunking it in this chowder. Mmm. That's exactly what I wanted right there. It's super delicious, it's creamy. The seafood flavor from that lobster comes through. The fish is awesome. That flavor in there is just insane. So this is an awesome way to use fish that maybe you would only use seafood typically, but man, that with crappies is insane. So we're gonna get to eating right now. We got a long day ahead of us tomorrow too. This trip has been really exciting from start to almost finish. We got one day left. We got like 24 hours left in Maine and we plan to go out swinging. We're still doing this fish donkey tournament right now. We'd love to put some more fish on the board, but at this point, our focus is one fish. We want the biggest crappie ever documented, ever on camera, and we think we can do it tomorrow. So we're getting ready. This is gonna be our last freaking go, and we need a freak. All the boys are hyped. We're getting ready to do this thing. We want an 18 plus tomorrow, and I don't see any other way around it. We need to get this fish.